Welcome to the 24-7 Sports Channel, and we have yet another big-time commitment for you here today. It's TJ Powers Day, the Worcester Academy and BABC forward who had an absolute breakout summer, playing his way up to a top 25 status in the national class of 2023 and getting recruited from some of the most prestigious schools in all of college basketball before ultimately trimming it down to these five schools. He's going to be choosing from Duke, Iowa, Virginia, Boston College, and North Carolina. And now coming to us live direct from Worcester Academy, where he's surrounded by friends and family in his home gym, we've got TJ Power and his parents. TJ, thanks for joining us here today. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. I'm um, super excited and it shows with all my friends and family. So let's do it. Absolutely. Now, before we get going, tell us who is with you by your side and in the gym today. Uh, so next to me here, I have my dad, uh, my mom, and then my sister's actually in Europe right now. So she's uh, she's tuning in. And then um, basically have a good chunk of our student body, um, some extended family, some uh, out of school friends. Uh, it's a really, really cool environment here. So. Very cool. Well, uh, we are excited to welcome in your sister to this broadcast, uh, virtually anyway. And before we get to the big announcement, I want to talk to you a little bit about how you got to this point, because it has been an escalation over the last couple of years. What has this process been like for you? Yeah, I mean, it's it's been a whirlwind for sure. Um, you know, never really knowing uh, what you're going to get. Uh, sometimes on these circuits, and um, I think I just struck it right with the right people around me and was able to grow my game a lot uh, these past few years. So I'm just super fortunate to, to be in this position and be able to um, make a decision like this. But it's definitely been been a long ride, and uh, I've, enjoyed, I've enjoyed it a lot. And, of course, you are a versatile athlete. The story on you was always, is he going to play baseball or is he going to play basketball because you starred in both sports? Uh, I remember it was two summers ago we were talking to you about this earlier today when uh, your AAU program, BABC, had a combine. It was right when the pandemic first arrived. It was a non-contact combine, and it was the first time I had seen you play uh, in quite some time. And it, it immediately hit me that the jump that, that you had make and were in the midst of making. Um, but I asked you earlier today, at what point did you realize that you had a chance to be quite this good and get the level of recruitment that you ended up generating? Um, yeah, definitely. I think uh, there's a certain point where, where your mindset switches and you start understanding how good you can be. Um, I definitely think I understood it a lot a lot sooner than a lot of the people. It's just a matter of getting out and improving it. Um, so if I had to say one moment, I would say, you know, probably sophomore year, high school. Um, you know, once I made the switch here and was able to perform in, in a competitive league like the NEPSAC, um, you know, I kind of came to some realizations and just stayed faithful to my work and uh, proved to be pretty, pretty successful with it. So. Yeah, of course, that led to a championship last year at Worcester Academy. And then this summer, you were as hot of a prospect as there was in the national class of 2023 and ended up getting recruitment from a variety of different Blue Bloods and high major conferences from coast to coast. So before we get to the big announcement, I'm sure that there is a list of people that you would like to thank and recognize. So first, I want to give you an opportunity to do that. Thank you. Um, I'm just going to stand up for this part. I'll try to be quick with this. Um, so here we go. Um, I just want to say thank you, first of all, to everyone uh, for coming. and. Uh, of course, shout out to, to Trey Norman for being in Marquette yesterday. Uh, it's my my guy. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll jump into it. So um, I started playing basketball in about the second grade. Uh, first learned to play at the Friendly House Community Center uh, just down the street here in Worcester. Um, ever since then, basketball has really been like the purest thing in the world to me. Uh, I find no greater happiness in my life than when I'm in the gym with a basketball in my hand. Uh, I'm glad to say I never really lost sight of what makes me happy um, throughout this whole process. 
So I still remember all those nights my dad and I would, would drive around Whistler aimlessly knocking on the doors of, of random gyms trying to sneak in and, and get shots up. Uh, funny enough, the door that was always open was the one to this building. I'm not sure if those doors being open was the work of Coach Jamie's big elaborate plan to get me here, uh, or maybe just a coincidence. Um, I'm just glad they were open because those doors led me to so much. Uh, they led me to a championship. They led me to new memories. And most importantly, they led me to bonds that will last forever. Uh, so that being said, I want to thank the bond people for keeping this game dear to me uh, and allowing me to experience this process, not as a as a recruit, but as a kid who just wanted to get some shots up. Uh, first off, I want to thank my coaches and teammates here at Worcester, uh, Coach Jamie, Coach Dan, Coach Jim, uh, our trainer Meg, who's been super helpful with me, um, and all my guys over in the stands, my team. Um, my BABC coaches, Coach D, Coach CJ, uh, my trainers, Coach Du, and my guy Guy standing up on the podium over there. I also want to thank the entire St. John's community for embracing me through my time. Uh, thanks to Mike Salina at Shot for Life, all my friends and coaches at the Friendly House, all my extended family here today in Washington home. I want to thank my sister Lauren for always yelling at the reps and being my biggest supporter. I want to thank my dad for being there for me when I need him the most, for never saying no to a workout no matter the circumstance, and for being my best friend. I want to thank my mom for being my rock, for always taking care of me, even when it made me embarrassing, for holding, <laughs> for holding down our house and our whole family, and for being the voice of reason uh, when my dad yells about stuff that no one really understands. <laughs> And, uh, and lastly, I just want to tell my Nana, watching from home, um, that I love her. And I know she's proud of me. Oh, and that her heart will fill our entire family uh, with love. Thank you. All right, TJ, the moment is here. You get to tell us where you're going to be playing your college basketball. Um, so I'll be committing to the Brotherhood at Duke University. Quite a moment there as we hear the, the chants of TJ from the uh, Worcester Academy faithful. Um, TJ, what was it about Duke and John Shire that made you decide that's where you wanted to play your college basketball? Um, yeah, I mean, ever since I was little, I, I want to play in the biggest stage um, in college. And, you know, Duke is, Duke is the biggest stage. Um, but what was great about my experience is that I didn't have to sacrifice anything as far as fit, um, relationship, um, you know, I think the way Coach Shire wants to play and the way he's um, making these classes and, and his team really fits my game, play fast, move the ball, um, be able to shoot. So, and then our relationship, um, bottom line, was really what got me. Um, and being a younger coach and being super relatable and having a chip on his shoulder and step into that position and really prove himself, um, you know, I can relate to a lot of those same, same things. So. And I think a lot of us went into the summer thinking that Duke was done recruiting in the class of 2023. They already had four commitments, but you had such a good month of July uh, with your BABC program and landed not just the Duke offer, but numerous offers from Blue Blood schools. And they really closed that gap at the end. How was Coach Shire able to do that and make that impression with you so quickly? Yeah, I think um, just my visit there really opened my eyes. Um, obviously, it's pretty intimidating, uh, the classes that they bring in, and uh, the uncertainty over who's staying, who's going. Uh, you know, people talk about over-recruiting all the time, but 
like when I when I got there, he really broke down the roster, and you know I saw a niche for me and a spot where I can really think I can flourish. Um, and he said, you know, he's gonna have my back throughout it all, and he put it as being, being my corner man. And I think uh, that's something that I that I really need uh, going forward. Is someone who can give me a lot of confidence and and be on my side and really listen to me. So uh, that's what did it for me. Well, you become the fifth top 25 prospect to commit to Duke in their very own Fab Five now. Uh, TJ, this was a very special ceremony and announcement. We want to thank you for sharing it with us. Uh, and now we want to let you go celebrate with your friends and family because it sounds like you got a lot of people in the background there to go say hello to. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, everybody, that is TJ Power, the latest commitment in Duke's number one nationally ranked recruiting class. And now for analysis on this commitment, we bring in national recruiting analyst Travis Branham. Travis, that was a heck of an announcement. I mean, he got me choked up. That was that was good stuff. What an impressive kid, man. I, yeah. I, I myself found myself uh, kind of choked up there. <clears throat> yeah. Sorry as I cleared my throat. Like, there yeah. you have it. But, oh, my gosh, impressive kid, very immature. Um, I mean, me and you both dealing with them over the past few months. I mean, do we expect anything less? Uh, just one of those kids that's just been uh, a joy to kind of talk to and just cover um, as good of a kid as you will we'll come around. No doubt about it. All right. Now let's talk about the, the fit from a basketball standpoint. Um, I know TJ is someone that you are a huge fan of. Uh, why are you so optimistic about his game? and long-term what he brings to Duke? First and foremost, it starts with his shot-making ability, standing six foot eight. Uh, anytime you get a guy with that size and that lethal ability to knock down shots on a consistent basis from the perimeter, that will always translate and that will always be valuable to have within your program, whether that's a guy coming off the bench or it is a starter uh, for several years at the college level. But he does much more than that. He's very skilled. He has a high IQ, and he possesses toughness. And I think we see that toughness uh, most show up when he's attacking the glass as a rebounder. This is a kid from the first time I ever saw him. I was very impressed with him rebounding the basketball. His team, the BABC uh, EYBL team, they didn't have the most size out there on the court. But TJ would find ways to impact the game. Uh, he does play quite a bit on the perimeter, but he find ways to impact the game in the paint, rebounding the basketball. Uh, so his ability to impact the game as a shot maker, as a scorer off of the bounce, being able to create his own shot as a rebounder, and also something that is vastly underrated with TJ Power is his ability to pass and make plays for others. This is a kid that sees the floor and makes mature decisions with the ball in his hands and is a very willing passer and makes those around him better. So this kid is going to be – a multi-year impact guy. I don't anticipate him being around there for one year. So his ability to impact the game in a variety of ways for a number of years, he makes for a very valuable addition. And, and you know the interesting thing about him in the uh, when we were talking to him earlier, talked about the baseball background. He was a pitcher and he threw left-handed. I mean, this is a guy who was clocking 85 and over as a left-handed pitcher, but he shoots the basketball right-handed. So he is literally ambidextrous and that comes through in his ability to handle and pass the ball I think that's one of the things that most people don't realize is he was known more as a handler and a passer and it's the shooting that's really escalated here in the last year or so now you mentioned you you don't anticipate you you do anticipate him being around at Duke for multiple years how does that um, impact the fit as we look at this class because they've got Sean Stewart they've got Mackenzie McBacco um, and so now they've got three immediate impact front court players. How, did, how does that trio fit together? Uh, you get a variety of shot making and versatility, especially with McKenzie and Baco. Both guys impact the game similarly on the offensive end of the floor with their ability to space out and knock down shots off the perimeter, but also can attack closeouts. Now, McKenzie and Baco, much more physical. He's longer, he's just a tremendous physical athlete. Uh, but TJ, again, both of these guys can play alongside each other with their ability to function both at the three and four, and especially if you're going to be playing four out like uh, Duke anticipates playing uh, with a, just a spaced out four. You can play them both at the same time. And then a guy like Sean Stewart, who I really like as a small ball five at times, he's very strong. He's an explosive athlete. And while he's only six foot six, six foot seven, 
He is a tremendous rim protector and a great, great rebounder. So all three guys can really function at the same time. You can go small with these guys. But at the same time, and I think this is a very, very big key component, component with TJ Power, is he doesn't have – any high expectations for himself and coming in and playing right away. He told you himself that he he knows that he's going to be coming in and playing with other talented players. And that was a reason he wanted to go to Duke. So he doesn't come in with the expectation. He's going to play 20 to 25 minutes a game and start nearly 20 to 30 games right off the bat. He doesn't have that plan for himself. He is comfortable coming in and being there for multiple years. So uh, for the expectation of himself alone, that's going to play out in big waves for the Duke program. Yeah, absolutely. This is a this is a long term, multi year asset for Duke. Um, the character is obvious for anyone who watched this. He's going to be great in the practice setting. He's a great teammate. That manifests itself with the way he plays. He was that he was the BABC's leading assist man this year, and by a fairly wide margin. So I think uh, you know today it was Worcester Academy fans that were chanting TJ TJ. One day soon, it might be Cameron Indoor fans that are cheering TJ, TJ, because uh, he, he's just hard not to like. And I think his teammates uh, embody that more than anyone. So, Travis, thank you for that analysis here. The number one recruiting class in the country, John Shire and Duke, add to it. The rich get richer. They now have five top 25 prospects in the national class of 2023. For more on this commitment from both myself and Travis, please visit 247sports.com. If you liked what you saw today, make sure to like and subscribe. We will continue to bring you the very best basketball and football commitments here on the 24-7 Sports Channel. Thanks for watching.